Hi, on today's show I want to go ahead and talk a little bit about zoonotic diseases, particularly those that are of most concern here in the United States. So what are zoonotic diseases? Well, according to this article from the Citizen Tribune, um, this veterinarian wrote, throughout history there has been a relationship between man and animals. So much so, it also means a relationship can sour and history has shown that relationship has soured many times in the form of zoonotic diseases. What are zoonotic diseases? They are diseases that pass from animals to humans. Think in terms of the bubonic plague that wiped out hundreds of thousands of lives during the Middle Ages, or even those diseases that still continue to haunt us like rabies caused by animal bites, the mosquito-borne disease malaria, or Rocky Mountain spotted fever obtained from ticks. And the list goes on and on. Anthrax, leprosy, influenza, Ebola, West Nile virus, TB. As long as humans and animals have coexisted, there is always a certain amount of risk involved. So how do uh, germs spread between animal and people? Well, there's several different ways. There can be direct contact, Right, contact with saliva, blood, urine, mucus, feces, etc., of the infected animal. And this could include petting or touching the animals or bites or scratches. Indirect contact could be contact with areas where animals live or roam, or objects or surfaces that have been contaminated with germs, like uh, fish tanks, uh, pet habitats, chicken coops, etc. Vector borne is another way. So being bitten by a tick or a mosquito or a flea um, could uh, transmit a zoonotic infection. And foodborne is another way. In each year, one in six Americans get sick from eating contaminated food. Um, and we'll get into that in a little bit. So that really leads me to uh, this recent report that was published uh, by several federal agencies, including the CDC and the USDA. And what they did is they got together and, in this collaborative effort, put together the list of what they consider the top zoonotic diseases of national concern in the United States. Um, and it says six out of every eight, excuse me, six out of every 10 infectious diseases in people are zoonotic, which makes it crucial that the nation strengthen its capabilities to prevent and respond to these diseases using a One Health approach. Well, what's the One Health approach? It's an approach that recognizes the connection between people, animals, plants, and their shared environment, and calls for experts in human, animal, and environmental health to work together to achieve the best health outcomes for all. So what they did is they put together this um, they had a workshop and they put together this list of eight zoonotic diseases that are of greatest concern to this country. And they came up with zoonotic influenza, salmonella, West Nile virus, plague, uh, emerging coronaviruses, rabies, brucella, and Lyme disease in that order. So let's go ahead and take a look at them in a little bit more detail. Start with the zoonotic influenzas, and these are uh, influenza viruses that are typically maintained in domestic and wild animals, but can be transmitted between animal species, including humans. Now, some animal influenza viruses are zoonotic and occasionally infect humans. Um, and these include the certain avian flus, H5, H7, H9, and the swine influenzas. And these are usually characterized with a V at the end of the uh, uh, identification calling them a variant virus. For example, H3N2V would be an example. Now, in the U.S., there's been no human infections with any avian influenza A, H5, or H9 to date. However, there has been one human infection with an avian origin influenza A, H7N2, uh, back in 2016. And this is in a person that had prolonged, unprotected exposure to the respiratory secretions of an infected cat. But the virus was ultimately characterized to be avian origin. So these are some of the concerns uh, when it comes to human infection with uh, animal influenzas. 
Uh, the next thing to look at is the salmonellas, salmonellosis. Uh, salmonellosis is one of the most important foodborne diseases in the United States. It sickens an estimated 1.2 million people annually, approximately 400 cases per 100,000 persons per year. And most of these, uh, most of which are not laboratory confirmed. It also leads to approximately 23,000 hospitalizations and 450 fatalities. Um, in addition, in 2017, 48 U.S. multi-state salmonella outbreaks were linked to contact with backyard poultry, resulting in over 1,100 laboratory-confirmed cases, about 250 hospitalizations, and one death. In addition, that same year, contact with pet turtles resulted in 76 salmonella cases, including 30 hospitalizations. So. Yeah, a lot of issues there. So when we're talking about salmonella, we're talking about contact with uh, poultry, uh, certain types of pets. We see outbreaks with hedgehogs now, um, uh, pet turtles, and other types of reptiles and amphibians. So there's a lot of different animals out there that carry um, salmonella that can infect human beings. Uh, number three on their list was West Nile virus, and this, of course, is a flavivirus that's transmitted via the mosquito. And um, outbreaks have been reported in young domestic geese, but all their poultry remain asymptomatic. So we see this in equids, like horses and donkeys and mules, and uh, they're the most severely affected type mammals. Um, now, West Nile virus has a case fatality rate in the United States somewhere in the ballpark of 5 to 6% in humans. Uh, in 2017, there were about 2,000 cases and about 115 deaths reported to the CDC. Um, it also can be found in wildlife, and it's most frequently found in corvids, like crows and ravens and magpies. But other birds can uh, contract it, including songbirds and, and raptors. Every now and then you do see a report of an eagle um, contracting West Nile virus. So another very, very important disease um, being transmitted from animals to people. Number four on the list is plague. This is caused, of course, by the bacterium Yersinia pestis. And it says from 1965 to 2012, a median of eight cases of plague were reported in the U.S. annually. During this time period, the human case fatality rate was about 13%. Although the endemic burden is small, pneumonic plague has epidemic potential. And Yersinia pestis is a potential bioterrorist agent and is classified as a tier one biological agent, according to the HHS select agent list. So what kind of animals are we talking about? primarily wildlife, right? The reservoir is wild rodents. Ground squirrels, prairie dogs, uh, black-footed ferrets are very highly susceptible to fatal infection. Um, and pets. Pets can also be very susceptible to, susceptible to infection, including cats and dogs, uh, but primarily cats. So very important disease. Um, here's a couple of prairie dogs here. Um, uh, as far as uh, zoonotic infections. The emerging coronaviruses made number five on their list. And this includes um, very important diseases like SARS coronavirus, right? The severe acute respiratory syndrome associated coronavirus. Remember, we had that big outbreak about 16, 17 years ago. Um, and what's currently circulating primarily in the Middle East is MERS coronavirus or the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome coronavirus. Now, there have been two travel acquired cases of MERS coronavirus in the U.S. in 2014, and neither was fatal. During the 2002-2003 SARS outbreak, there were 27 probable cases in the United States, and again, none were fatal. But in some other countries, um, these two diseases have a pretty high case fatality rate, somewhere in the 30% range. 
Now, the animal disease burden is um, seen, we, it's been demonstrated in uh, dromedary camels. And when we were talking about uh, uh, SARS coronavirus, it was isolated from civets um, over in, uh, in, the, in the Far East. So another important disease that we got to keep an eye on uh, here in the United States. Number six, something many of us are quite familiar with, the rabies virus. And it's estimated that U.S. citizens experience a potential rabies exposure at a rate of 140 exposures per 100,000 persons each year. So that's about 40 to 50,000 exposures annually. Um, the post-exposure prophylaxis costs an average of about $4,500 per person. Um, now, despite the relative frequent human rabies exposures in the U.S., human deaths are relatively uncommon due to accessible post-exposure treatment. Globally, though, uh, rabies causes approximately 60,000 deaths annually, more than any other zoonotic pathogen. So it's a big problem globally, um, and we do see it quite a bit in uh, wild animals here in the United States. In 2015, over 5,000 cases of rabid wildlife were reported, including 1,700 bats, 1,600 raccoons, and almost 1,400 skunks. Those were the top three. Uh, 67 rabid dogs were reported in 2015, and about 250 rabid cats. So rabies is still a problem uh, in the United States, but thanks to PEP, uh, there's only one to two human fatalities per year. Uh, number seven on their list is brucellosis, and this is caused by a bacteria um, from the brucella species. Um, now, the incidence in the U.S. in humans is about 0.4 cases per million, so about 100 cases every year in the U.S., uh, primarily in California, Texas, Arizona, and Florida. And it's not typically fatal if it's treated. And if it's untreated, the case fatality rate can be up to about 5%. So most cases uh, recover in about a month or so, and a small minority of those cases become chronically ill. Most human cases in the United States are acquired overseas or due to consumption of infected milk products. So Brucella abortus, the most important Brucella species in the U.S., mainly infects ruminants. Um, and Brucella abortus has two primary reservoirs in the U.S., bison and elk in the greater Yellowstone area. And there's some spillover events of Brucella sui into cattle, but the full extent is unknown. So, yeah, there are some issues with Brucella, but primarily it's via drinking uh, unpasteurized milk and stuff from while traveling in other countries. And let me go ahead and close out with number eight on uh, their priority list, and that's Lyme disease, which is caused by the bacterium the spirochete Borrelia burgdorferi. Now Borrelia burgdorferi is an obligatory zoonosis. It's most common, it's the most common vector-borne pathogen in the U.S. Uh, during 2004 to 2016, more than 400,000 cases were reported to the CDC, but this might represent as little as 10% of the true incidence. The range of the principal vector, the tick, Exoides scapularis has been expanding and the number of cases rising, representing a substantial burden on state and local health department resources in high incident states. Uh, particularly like the Northeast and the Upper Midwest are, would be considered high incident areas. Lyme disease is rarely fatal, but the economic cost of testing, treatment, and lost productivity is a major national burden. Even with treatment, a small percentage of cases experience post-treatment Lyme disease syndrome and experience symptoms such as fatigue and muscle aches that can last for more than six months. Now, Lyme disease has been reported in cattle and horses, 
Uh, however, cattle appear largely resistant to the infection. Clinical manifestations of equine Lyme disease are a significant problem in the U.S. Uh, disease in wildlife is unknown. The white-footed mouse is the main reservoir of, of Burgdor Borrelia burgdorferi, although other wild rodents can also act as reservoirs. Birds and lizards may also act as reservoirs, although their role is unclear. Although deer are not reservoirs of Lyme disease, they serve as a host for the vector tick, and the growing population of white-tailed deer have been implicated in expanding the risk to humans. While most seropositive dogs and cats show no sign of illness, when illness does occur in dogs, Lyme disease is most commonly associated with arthritis, although nephritis and rare cardiac forms have also been described. So, yeah, that's the top eight zoonotic infections of concern in the United States, according to this working group of the CDC, the USDA, and other agencies. So I hope you enjoy this show. Comment below. Uh, go ahead and like it. Uh, share it with your friends. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you next time. And don't forget to check us out at the website, OutbreakNewsToday.com, the podcast, Outbreak News Interviews, which can be found on the website, on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, and Spotify. And the Outbreak News This Week radio show, which is aired Sundays at 1 p.m. Eastern Time in the Tampa Bay area on AM 1380 The Biz or online streaming at 1380thebiz.com. And check out our social media presence, Facebook at Infectious Disease News and Twitter at BackDman63. Outbreak News TV is a production of The Global Dispatch. Copyright The Global Dispatch Incorporated 2019.